Hallelujah and Bona Yesu Asifiwe. I'm so delighted to be standing before you today. It's such a joy, such an honor that the Lord has honored this day that we will be listening to this morning devotion. It's my delight and it's my, I believe that the Lord has woken you up well and you are having a beautiful morning. My name is Sheila Wangare. I am born again. I love Jesus so much. He has been everything in my life, my joy, my delight, my my everything, my pride, and I'm a member of this church. I, I would like to thank uh, Jimmy Kimani for the chance to be standing here and our own pastor, Brian Moshigadi, for also leading us well and allowing us to be listening to the word of God today. We are looking at our focusing on God in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, or yeah, from 13 going on to 14. And um, in, in our devotionals, we are looking at, at the attributes of God. And this morning, I will be talking about an attribute of God that is the attribute of forgiveness. Philippians chapter 13, verse 13 to 14 says that, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies mm -hmm. ahead. Forgiveness has become a rare medicine in our today's generation. Because most people usually think that just because I have carried this person, or just because these things are happening the way they are happening, I don't think this person deserves my happiness. Forgiveness in Greek means afiemi. That means to send away, to live alone, to permit, to release, to remit, to let go or to let, uh, to, to let alone. So forgiveness is not something that is not easy at all because you realize that the, most, the, the more closer you are to someone, the more, uh, the, even the most closest you are to someone, the more wounded you become once someone hurts you or once someone harbors bitterness in your heart. And as Christian, the word of God reminds us that forgiveness is not optional. Forgiveness is mandatory. We are going to look at the attributes of Christ in the attribute of forgiveness uh, looking at him, uh, at how he, wa he, he was able to forgive, how he was able to let go, how he was able to, to, to pursue his purpose, how he was able to focus on, the, on, on, on his call. In an ideal scenario, what you and me expect is that because someone hurt me, because someone did something wrong to me, the wrongdoer is going to come and admit his sins, is going to come and say that, that, that you hurt me and, ex and uh, I, want, I want your forgiveness and all those things. But in real life, what happens is, once one has hurt you, what happens is that this person does not come and ask for forgiveness. And unamwananga to church and endelea as if life is just normal. You just see them unajuliza, eh, na huyu mtu by the way, anajua lini heart. Anajua kweli, why is, his, why is his or her life just going on normally? Like, and, and it shouldn't be happening. And one day, Matthew was, uh, um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21, Peter was asking Jesus how many times you are supposed to forgive. And then he's asking him, is it seven times? And then Jesus is like, mm, not really. It's like, it's 77, 77, <coughs> seven times. And but when I was looking at that, what came into my mind is, it's not that, like Jesus was trying to say that this is the exact number you are supposed to forgive someone. This is like, you are supposed to forgive someone as many times as you can. Like, do not get tired of forgiveness. One thing that I love about Jesus is that he overcame all he faced by assigning the blame where it really belonged. Jesus could have done one thing when he was going to, to, to Calvary. He could have decided to place the blame on you and me. He could have decided to place the blame on someone else, but he chose his battles wisely. What did he do? He, he focused by assigning the blame on the right person who was Satan, who is an enemy of the Lord and an enemy for us all. And, and by doing that, he conquered both life and death. Now let's have a look at Jesus. In the book of Matthew 5.48, it reminds us that we need to be perfect just as Christ is perfect. So the word of God is reminding us today that the standard of perfection is Jesus himself. The standard of forgiveness is Jesus himself. The standard of peace is, Je is Jesus himself. Everything we do, the standard should be Jesus himself. We should be imitators of Christ in everything that we do because we are his children. We have to imitate how Jesus forgives. We have to imitate how Jesus walked through his life. We have to imitate how Jesus gives us peace. God will not give everyone forgiveness as we deserve, though he desires to. Why? Because the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says that, Peter saying to Simon the sorcerer, Repent therefore of your wickedness and pray to God. Perhaps if the thought of the heart, if the, if, if the thought of the heart may be forgiven. Peter is clear to Simon and he's telling him that maybe when, when God looks at your heart, he is going to forgive you. And, and this, is, this, this is what God looks at us when, when we are trying to ask for forgiveness. All he calls us to do is to have a contrite spirit and to have a repentant heart before him. 
However, where God has forgiven, we should learn how to imitate him. Number one, we should, we, we should ask ourselves, who does God forgive? How does he forgive? And why does he forgive? Who does God forgive? God forgives everyone who comes to him with a broken heart and with a contrite spirit. Whether you pray that prayer privately or whether you want to, to just declare it publicly, God is a loving God and he's a forgiving God and he looks at your heart and then he, he, he just forgives you. Forgiveness is not an option, but it is mandatory. For you to be forgiven by God, you have to forgive that person who has, who has wronged you first. Number two, how does God forgive? God forgives generously. The word of God in the book of Psalms 103 verse 10 to 14 says that he has not dealt with our sins as we deserve, nor rewarded our iniquities as far as, as high as heaven is from the earth, so great is his mercy to those who fear him. As the east is far from the west, so has he removed our sins. As a father has pity on his kids, so does Christ have pity on us. He remembers that we are dust. Christ forgives in mercy, and so we must forgive in mercy. Remember, he remembers that we are still human. He remembers that we are still dust and looks at us with eyes of forgiveness. He looks at us with eyes of love. The word of God reminds us that love covers a multitude of sins. So you and I cannot be able to forgive if we do not have love that is bound within us. We are not able to forgive if we are not able to look uh, to, to forego what is gone and focus on what is, about, what is in front of us. If God can forgive, why is it that it is, that it is too hard for, for us to forgive? And the last point, why does God forgive? God forgives us because everyone is worth eternal life. He wants people to be saved. He wants people to be set free. He wants, he wants people to be redeemed. He wants people to see the cross, uh, to see the cross as, a, as a part of redemption. He wants people to pursue holiness. He wants people to focus on, 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 on what is ahead of us, which is eternal life. God has offered forgiveness of all men. So it doesn't matter how much you hold that person in your heart. Imagine Badwata Barikiwa. Arakama, you are saying that because this person, Haonangi Kama Mendikosea, Ama, this person does not see us if they, it's such a big deal she, she or he has done, that person will still be blessed. So instead of allowing God to hold, to hold his blessings from you, instead of harboring that bitterness and that heart, in, that heart inside your spirit, you have to let that person go. And God is reminding us today that forgiveness truly is not an option we make. Forgiveness is, a, is mandatory from him and it's a choice that you make and you tell God that you know what God, I cannot do this by my own. This person hurt me so much and I, and I feel like I feel like he's like like he like he deserves the biggest punishment. But because God, if God, if God again, if Jesus again acquired the cross with with feelings, he will not be in a position to to do it all. In Gefika Mahali wa Okati wana uliza Barnabas or Jesus, Barnabas or Jesus. Then maybe he just does something and there is darkness or people or or afunge tu midomo zaha or what water. But he chose to bear the entire. He, he chose to bear the entire journey. He chose to bear the cross. He chose to do all those kinds of things because he looked at you and me with eyes of love and chose to forgive you and me. So today God is calling us as as we are looking at the attribute of Jesus as the attribute of, as an attribute of forgiveness. God is calling for you and me to let go of that person we, are, we, we have been holding in our hearts. Imagine missing heaven just because you held someone in your heart. Imagine missing heaven because someone just offended you and you thought, ah, this person does not, deserve, does not deserve all these things. But if Christ has forgiven you, if Christ has looked at you with eyes of love, then you have got to spread the same to other people. You have got to give the same to other people. The same way, you know, we, we could be believers, but many things are bringing us back, and forgiveness being one of them. Even if you don't forgive, uh, as I have said um, before, even if we don't forgive, that person will, will, will still keep on doing things, will still keep on excelling. So it's, it's, it's up to us to decide today that we are going to, for, to forgive all those who have wronged us. We are going to forgive and to let go, to focus our eyes on the cross because the cross has all the answers that we need. The cross has everything that we desire. Because Christ forgives, we must forgive. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever be lives in him shall not perish but have everything
everlasting life, forgetting everything that, that is behind us, forgetting everyone that has had a fault on us, forgetting everyone who has made us bitter, forgetting everyone who has made us hurt, and focusing on Jesus, the author and finisher of our life. We have a race to run. We have a journey to go. So we cannot keep on being dragged behind by the things that are behind us. We cannot keep on going slowly because someone hurt us. You have to let go of that person. In as much as it, as, as it is not easy, in as much as you may look at it and, and think, I do not, I, I, this person deserves even something even more bad than what, than what they are going through right now. God forgives generously. God forgives everyone, and so must you forgive. And so God is calling each and every one of us today. Whatever it is that you have been carrying, in your heart, especially with the young people, the way we just carry small things, just because someone hurt you, kitambo, you are still carrying it today. Maybe someone did something to you yesterday. You are still carrying it today. So today, in, our, in, in today's morning devotion, that God is calling us, each and every one of us, to live in love, to just spread the, to, to spread the love of God, to live closely with people, to live in peace with people, to live at at just in, in good accord, accordance with people because that is what Christ has called us to do, to forgive and to let go. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you. We give you all the praise and all the glory, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because today we have learned your, one of your attributes as forgiveness. And thank you, Lord, because you are causing our hearts to be more forgiving. You are causing our hearts to focus on you alone, Jehovah, King of glory. That even we are going to leave everything behind and we are going to focus on the cross. We are going to focus on this journey of life, oh God. Keeping our eyes on eternal life, Jehovah God, that we will let go everything that easily besets us. We are going to let go everything that easily brings us down, Jehovah, King of glory. We love you and we worship you because you are God. God, and that is your name. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.